Wales her once. Think he might like to try something new. He loathed it. Oh? Loathed. Not just the concept or the decor or the people, but they made the cardinal mistake of refusing to put a soft-boiled egg on top. What? He has a soft-boiled egg with everything. You must know that. And he never eats garlic because of this bizarre new rule. Come supper time, he's always ravenous. Which new rule? The lunch rule. Darling, I would have thought it would have been one of the first things you'd have noticed about him. The Prince of Wales doesn't eat lunch. Well, never. Not if he can help it. And if he's forced to because of some engagement, it puts him in a terrible mood. And he drones on and on about gas and bloating and wasted energy due to needless digestion. I try to cheer him up, but when his tummy goes, so does his sense of humor, I'm afraid. One of his awful gurus put him onto it. Well, not gurus, but you know how he loves to surround himself with dreary old men and daddy substitutes. No. Darling, you really know nothing, do you? You need a proper Fred tutorial. Oh, thank you. Ah, see. Capisco. Fred. It's my nickname for the Prince of Wales. And he calls me Gladys. It's harmless nonsense, really. Right. Anyway, one of his boring friends, probably Lawrence Vanderpost. Good luck with that, by the way. Snooze. Got into his head and said that it was only healthy to eat two meals a day. And since Fred says that breakfast is too delicious to give up and dinner's too important, it had to be lunch. Now that you mention it, we've hardly been with one another at lunchtime, so I haven't really noticed. The fact is, we've hardly been with one another at all. But that's not true. It is. You met at Babington Hall's trials. Yes. Then Verdi's Requiem at the Albert Hall with a chaperone. Granny, yes. Who didn't let you out of her sight for a second. Not a second. Then the weekend at Balmoral, where you were a complete triumph. It'll go down in history as one of the great Balmoral debuts, the perfect ten. And then... Highgrove? Golly. He obviously tells you everything. Well, we talk most days. What did you think of it? His new house? Highgrove? Hmm. It's, um, it's lovely. Isn't it? Hmm. Mm. He asked me what I would do with it while I was decorating. Did he? Mm, yes. I'm rather good at all that. And what did you say? I said I'd like to shoot it up a bit. Make it a bit less stuffy. Give it a bit of colour, some yellows and peaches. And don't forget green, his favourite. And green. Do you garden? Not really. He's obsessed by gardening. Yes, I know. He's already talking about either a wild garden or a walled garden. Both. Both. Mm. And a kitchen garden and a sundial garden. Do you fish? No, not really. What about hunting? Not if I can help it. More of a townie, really. So you see yourself living more in London than in the country? Why do you ask? Just curious? Mm. No, I'm sorry, I can't stay for coffee. Well, then let me get this. Absolutely not. I'm the senior party here. Oh, please. <sighs> well, let's go Dutch. Good idea. I'm all for sharing. <laughs>